be the eagle. You trying to be the eagle, Jerry? Crow was pecking at the door. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you want to be the bird. You a green, but you ain't the green, green, you know? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm, a, I, I, I'm, I'm OK with it. Look, he, he called him out, so you got to respond. I don't know. Um, That's like coach's beef? It's like a yeah. coach's beef right coach there. Beef. OK, OK. Uh, TJ, was Sean Payton out of line? I like it. Nah, I don't think he's out of line. We, we don't see this coach to coach, team to team. So I actually like it because they play week five, I believe that's October 8th. October you're gonna be, 8th, be ready. put and it on your you, calendar. When you look at Denver's schedule, they have an opportunity to be three and one, maybe four and oh. The three and one could be they could lose to the Dolphins. I believe that's week three. But now that game gets a little more interesting. Yes. And <laughs> Sean Payton is looking at it from the perspective of what he was told that happened in Denver, what was allowed. It's almost as if a parent is in the room now and you're not going to let the kids just do what they want to do. The players in Denver, they were doing what they wanted to do and Sean Payton is going to put a stop to it. Like, he almost made me believe Nathaniel Hackett shouldn't even be a coach in the league. Mm. Like, mm. it's that bad. Like, and he basically said it. Yeah. Like, Hackett that bad? Like, it was really the coach and it wasn't the player. So now, now Russell Wilson, you got to go make Sean Payton be right with this statement. You got to go play good football because Sean Payton is basically coming out saying you are going to play better because the coach that you had was god awful. Shady, was he out of line for talking about the Jets like this, for throwing the Jets in it? No, I'm going to say no. <laughs> nah, I like it. I mean, I love when people, coaches, whoever it is, are honest. And he spoke the truth. He, he, you know, he came in the office and, and he probably asked, hey, what was the issue last year? What was going on? And they were probably running all the things down that they did in practice. You know, who was in the building? What were they doing? And he's like, I, I can't believe this. Sean Payne's like an old school type of coach. Even like, you know, Russ probably having some of his employees coming into the, to the building. Guys, he's work on his arm or his trainers. And he probably, I, I'm not used to having that. I had a guy like Drew Brees who's a Hall of Famer and he didn't have that and I didn't allow that. So I'm not going to allow that here. I'm sure I could, I could tell you this, that now in that practice in Denver, it's way different than it was last year. Them dudes are probably, they on time for meetings, they're they doing all the right things to get better, and he's making everybody in that room accountable. That's what they need. And I do think that the, the Broncos will be a better team this year, and I have no problem with nothing Sean Payton said. I like Sean Payton. One thing about him, and we can both get along and, and understand, is that he keep it real, I keep it real. I mean, don't, they don't like it. They don't like not, it when you keep it real with I'm them. not going to argue with Sean yeah. Payton. He's just one person I'm not arguing with. The, the Jets caught a stray. They did. Like, he's, he's talking about his team, and he's talking about all the things that aren't going to go on with his team. And he noticed the team that is the loudest this offseason, which just happens to be the New York Jets. And the Jets are now on hard knocks. And traditionally speaking, hard knocks doesn't necessarily translate to postseason success. So, actually, the Jets, the last time they were on Hard Knocks, had a successful season. So, I, I argue maybe that, maybe it's, uh, it's all coming together. But he's just pointing out that the way that you do business in the offseason, the type of attention, the type of expectations that you raise from big moves, the type of talking that you do and, mm -hmm. and all that, you have to live up to it. And sometimes all of those things can be distractions. And I think distractions sometimes is like a big word that people take very seriously. But when you think of what you put your energy into every day, right. you only have so much of it. That's when true. you go to work, you drive to work every day, and you know exactly who you're going to talk to on the way in. You know exactly what you're going to have for lunch. You know where you're going to park. You know what your routine is. Right. You know what you know the, the mm -hmm. local reporters. You know who's going to have attitude, who's cool, whatever. When you know everything, you can focus more of your energy on getting better. But if you're doing all this other stuff, sometimes it can be distracting, especially in a new situation. But I ain't telling Sean Payton not to say nothing. What do you think, Rick? Was he out of line for this? Yeah, he was out of line. Because this wasn't him taking shots. This was him taking a blowtorch. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? He was letting his he, thing. He, he, lit him, he lit up the coaching staff. And when he says 20 dirty hands, that means the 10 coaches, the entire coaching staff of the Denver Broncos last year had a hand in why they were as bad as they were. It wasn't my guy, Russell Wilson. It was the coaching staff. And then, oh, and by the way, the New York Jets, who hired the guy who was the head coach here last year, they ain't doing it right either. If we're talking about distractions, why does Sean Payton have to talk about last year or get specific about who was at fault last year or what the Jets are doing now? Shouldn't his focus just be on 
what he's doing with the Denver Broncos. Isn't, can't I make the case that bringing this all up and lighting a fire for the New York Jets in week five, October 8th, like I'm creating problems for my team. I'm creating challenges for my team that don't necessarily to be there. He could say all the stuff. You have no idea how much work we've had to do this year without naming anybody specifically or going after how the New York Jets are going about their business right now. Because let's face it, they signed Aaron Rodgers, okay? They are going to get a lot of love yeah. and a lot yeah. of attention for signing Aaron Rodgers. I can't hate on that. So what are we uh, – look, I respect Sean Payton as, as a coach without Please do. Question. Please do. But, man, I, I just – I feel like he did – a little more than he had to do as far as coaching the Denver Broncos. Well, he wasn't done calling people out. The Broncos finished 5-12 and 12 last season, and he didn't hesitate to rip former Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett while defending quarterback Russell Wilson, saying it might have been one of the worst coaching jobs in the history of the NFL. The offense, I don't know Hackett. A lot of people had dirt on their hands. It wasn't just Russell. He didn't just flip. He still has it. This BS that he hit a wall, shoot, they couldn't get a play in. They were 29th in the league in pre-snap penalties on both sides of the ball. So, That's a good point. Shady, do you expect Sean Payton to turn around Russell Wilson and the Broncos this year? Absolutely. I, I truly do. I, I think coaching is a big thing. He talked about it. I mean, they ranked 31st in penalties. That's not players. That's coaching. Yeah. He talked about they couldn't get plays in. If you recall, watching the games, it's, it's the clock's running. You know, the, the play clock is like down to 10, and they're finally getting the play. They're finally coming out the huddle. That's coaching. I remember one of the things we, we, we watched that we hated was um, they couldn't figure out if they wanted to take a timeout, right, right. So to have a field goal or go yeah, for it. Yeah. And they ran the whole clock down. Yeah. It was, like, confusing. So yep. a lot of things he's saying is true, that a lot of that was coaching. And I do believe that they will change it around because Sean Payne's a coach, right? He's going to make everybody in that, that, that locker room accountable, coaches and players. Mm -hmm. Guys going to be on time. Guys will be on, on, in the right positions when they need to be. Catching the ball, throwing the ball, be on time. I think Russell, another one. He's going to hold him accountable, right? Because when you have a player that was better than him or even similar, you can coach him the same way. I can be tough on you because I did it with him. He's a Hall of Famer, and that's Drew Brees. So I truly believe that they'll be a way better ran team just by the coaching part of it because they got some talent. Jay, you know we got to keep it real around here. Keep it real. That's all we do. Keep it real. Last year wasn't bad. It was a disaster. It was. It was terrible. It was terrible. Terrible. And... We were all talking the exact same way about the Broncos that we are talking about the Jets right now. I got to keep it real because right. it's on tape. I said it. We were talking about Super Bowls. How many Super Bowls? Uh, is it bad if they don't win a Super Bowl this year? It was awful. It was unwatchable football last year. So, of course, Sean Payton is going to... Because what else can you say? There, nothing good happened in Denver last year. People got fired. It was a disaster. Dang. People lost their jobs. People had to move. It was bad. And we could see how bad it was. It wasn't like, oh, is there like some drama? Oh, he looks like he's having some problems. No, it was a disaster. It was bad. So he's just keeping it real. He's just saying, y'all saw it, hmm. and that ain't me. <laughs> and that's not how we're doing things. And so for him to come in and say, whatever you did last year, forget about it. Let that be the past. That's ancient history because we're doing things differently now. And it's going to be my way. And Sean Payton is a made man in this league. He, we've seen him take lesser quarterback talent and win games. Mm -hmm. Anybody he touches gets better. So it, it's absolutely within his right to come in and say, whatever they were doing last year was bad, and Russ still has it. That's it. Wh what am I supposed to say to Sean Payton? I've seen him turn around an entire organization, build it up into win a, winning a Super Bowl right. with a guy that people didn't want in Drew Brees. Don't forget, yeah, people, Drew, people yeah. didn't want Drew Brees. And they went and, and started a whole culture, changed a whole organization. Fans were going to games with, with bags on their head. It was not the Saints that we think, think of now. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think he really, he didn't mince words, but what was there to say? Right, yeah. Russ won four games last year. Yeah. We watched the games together. We, we were like, we are, it was painful to watch the Broncos last year. So we have to keep in mind the expectations that were there and how badly yeah. it went there. It's not out of line for him to say, Everything that went wrong last year, we're not doing that. But this is the challenge, is that now they have to be good. Now they had to be good regardless. They're paying Russ $100 billion, and they brought in Sean Payton. I get that, but he's, he has to have an impact on this team. And if we were so wrong about their 
Super Bowl aspirations last year. Is it all on the coaching? Or did we maybe overrate Russell Wilson a little bit? Or maybe we overrated Russell the other was bad, talent? Though, man. Bad. I'm, I, I'm not disputing that. All, and, and I'm not saying that Sean can't do it, but I look at the AFC mm -hmm. and I look at that division. This is no easy task to lift them up. I mean, if they're two games better, based on the way Sean Payton is talking, that's not going to be good enough. Like, that, he, he's talking like, you really better, if, if you're going to have that kind of an impact, if coaching was that much of an issue and you're going to clean this up, then, then isn't it reasonable to believe or expect that things are going to be measurably better? And it's not that they won't be, but they won't ne that won't necessarily be reflected in the win-loss column. And I think ultimately that's how people are going to judge it. I mean, we're going to keep it a buck about the Giants last year. Hmm. I mean, the Giants won. Nine seven. Well, well, I mean, well, well, you know, what I'm about to say, Shady. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they won nine games. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know if they won the year before that, but like that it wasn't was good. No. it wasn't good. No. Right. So, so a, a turnaround of three more wins for the Broncos from five to winning eight, eight, eight games this year would be marketably better yep. for how bad yeah, the organization absolutely. was. TJ? Russell Wilson is going to be better, and Sean Payton has seen enough this off season to believe that, that. That's why he's talking the way he's talking. But this is what happens. You play with the Eagles for how many years? Like six. six and then, years. and I play with the Bengals eight. And this is what happens. When you leave and go to a different team, then you leave and go to another team, and then you leave and go to another team, you start to realize some of these coaches, they trash. They, yes. Some yes. of these coaches are trash. And, but they get jobs. Because when you just stay on one team, you don't know if your coach is trash or not. But when you start going to different teams, you start to realize, how is this dude coaching? That's a good point. And nobody talks about that. Oh, he's in the league. He's the best coach. False. And this Nathaniel Hackett cannot be a good coach because if Sean Payton turns this around, right away, I don't care how good the Jets do, this all Aaron Rodgers, Hackett got to go. Because there's no way... He would say these things if he didn't believe it. Like, he really believes that Nathaniel Hackett is the reason Russell Wilson didn't play well. This is the question I have. I believe that, too, though. Can, can, can Nathaniel Hackett be a terrible head coach and a good offensive coordinator? I mean, yes. he was a coordinator. Yes. No, no, no. He was right. a coordinator, I mean, though. Can... Was he not the coordinator? Understood, but I'm saying that if you're going to put the the blame of what they defense happened was, they defense wasn't the problem. It was yeah. their offense. But I do think, like, yeah. uh, in the context of what he said, I mean, he didn't. He said Nathaniel Hackett was very bad. Like, there's, he yeah. said it was really bad. But he also said there was a lot of other things going on that around not just sure, the, the actual know. coaching that affected the winning. Like, he talked about having all the pomp and circumstance and all that. He talked about having too much going on with, with Russ. Like, he, he's, he's got too many things. The parking spot, the, the quarterback coach, too the many people in the building. The there's, the no, there's no control. And if you are Nathaniel Hackett and you're a rookie head coach, which I thought was a, was a risky move to begin with, to bring in a rookie head coach to this situation, when you're a rookie head coach and you're dealing with someone like Russell Wilson who just got all this money, mm. is this big trade, he's a guy who's won a Super Bowl, been to two, he's coming in with that kind of energy, maybe you make concessions that a coach like a Sean Payton wouldn't make for someone or would say or would sit with him and be like, hey, I know you did things differently here or there, this is what you want to do, but we're running things a certain way here and there's a certain level of respect. Mm. Now, Russ is in a different place now. He's in a more, like, he got to prove himself. He got but a, a rookie co head coach may not, and that's still on Nathaniel Hackett, but maybe that played a role in it as well. You got a, a, a coach is a psychologist, really. That, that's what he is. Can you get along and deal with different people? And the toughest job is your best players. You got to figure out a way to reach your best players without pissing them off. If you can reach them, everybody else falls in line. But this is what happened in Seattle. Russell Wilson wanted a little more control, and Pete Carroll was like, nah, mm -hmm. yeah. nah, you're not getting this. No, okay, we're going to get rid of you. And so he took that control to Denver. It didn't work, so now he's going to fall back in line. But Nathaniel Hackett gave him too much of a liberty. He gave him too much rope, too much leeway. Now Sean Payton has to reel it in. But that was the biggest, you cannot let the players run the locker room. Because we, we want to win. But if you let us do what we want to do, we're going to do it. <laughs> well, uh, also, if it, if it translates to winning, 
and what you're asking for is is reasonable and it's benefiting the whole team. Hey, like Tom start, Brady got how that D lineman how that D lineman was talking to Russell. Hey. You remember that? You remember how he looked at him? No, nah, yes. but, but he was just trying to get him hype. He wasn't talking bad to him. And it's because of everything that they knew he was getting away with, yeah. nobody else was. I, I hear you. I'm angry I just, about it. I, yeah. I think that Sean Payton's expectations are high already. Russell Wilson's expectations are high already. And Sean is just reiterating what is clearly the energy in the building that he's the boss and he actually knows I how to do this. I think he's going to be better, though. And do. we're doing things a different way this year. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to be better than last year. Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.